As much as I love my XXL Lego inspired electric go-kart, it's rather heavy and cumbersome to take places. So I thought I need something smaller, more practical. That's when I spotted this. This is the Lego kit Alpha Racer 8810 released in 1991. And I thought, what if I scaled this up to the same size as the Lego go-kart? Well, this would be the front tire. And that would be about the same size as a monkey bike, which would be really cool. So it's just rude not to do it. So there's the plan, scale this to this. I'm gonna to need to make it strong enough to ride, I'm gonna to need to add a motor to it and brakes, and the first part of that process is to completely build this model within my cab package. So let's start there. I have a pretty large library of parts now within my CAD package, so it's fairly fast to assemble a kit. It's pretty much the same way as you would do with the normal Lego kit, but obviously I'm assembling this in a virtual environment. The great thing about building everything in the cab package first is that I can check that everything fits together before I print anything. This front tube is probably the weakest part of the bike as it's going to be taking the loads from the front forks. There'll be bearings top and bottom and the bottom bearing will be a taper roller bearing. This will take both axial and radial loads. To add strength where it's needed I'm going to add some slots here and that will make sure that when this is printed the printer will add extra perimeters in this area rather than just being infill. I'll also do the same on the bottom. Let's jump forwards now and have a look at the whole rear assembly. You can see I've gone with a blue, grey and black colour scheme. I quite like the blue because it's a bit more vintage and I've also added this black seat which is a bit more comfortable. I've got the front section built as well. I'm not really happy with that mud guard though. I'm going to take that off and redesign it. But otherwise the bike is looking pretty good. In this video I'm going to be building this front section. I'm going to split the CAD model in two here, so we can see what's inside these forks. So you can see there's a bit of studding that runs right the way down through the middle, and that goes through this piece of steel square tube. And that goes all the way down to the bottom, into the bottom knuckle. In the knuckle there's another captive nut that picks up on that piece of studding, and that holds this whole assembly together. Obviously there's PLA casing around the whole thing, so it looks like a standard Lego axle. Right now I'm using that big balloon tire that we saw at the start of this video. However, my plan is to 3D print a wheel and tire so it looks much more like the original LEGO system. Let's take a look at the final design. This version doesn't have mud guards, but I think I will print them and just see how they look on the actual build. I think this seat looks pretty comfortable, but I might have to add some padding to the top. This is a water bottle battery that's gonna be supplying the power to the bike. I'm going to be using the red tank on the bike to hide the motor controller inside of it. I'm really pleased with the vintage colour scheme that I came up with. The blue, red, grey and black really go nicely together and it's very much the vintage technique of my era. If you have a different idea for colour schemes then do let me know in the comments below. Before I spend hundreds of hours printing the parts out, I'll always do a couple of test pieces to make sure that they're fitting correctly. In this case the tolerance was miles out, so I had to re-cad these to get the tolerance to fit and once I've got that nice and snug I know I can continue. You don't want to spend hundreds of hours wasting filament and time. I'm using various printers for this project. This is on the Bamboo Labs P1S printer. It's a 0.8mm nozzle, 0.5mm layer height. Even with that layer height this overhang coats pretty well. The infill and the perimeters I vary depending on whether I need the start part strong or light. I even fired up my iFactory 3D belt printer. This came in very handy for doing this really long part which I couldn't fit on any other printer. That comes in part two of this video series. And my latest addition is the Prusa XL which I've been maxing their bed out. And also I'm going to be printing some uh, multi-filament parts on this. Again I'm using a 0.8mm nozzle at 0.5mm layer height. As usual Polymaker has supplied the materials for this project. I'm using Polylite and Polymax PLA and a bit of polycarbonate. Let's crack on and build something. I am going to add some bolted sections on this bike and this is the first part. 
This is the front section, which is gonna hold the forks together. So there's gonna be some M10 studding running down through all the parts and clamping it all together. I had to clear the holes out on a couple of parts because I'd forgotten to put the uh, M10 hole through them. So I'm just using these parts as templates to carry the hole on through. This axle joiner should be a snug fit in here, so I might have to add a shim to space it out a little bit. I've used nylocks on the top of this studding, but ultimately I'll add some thread locker, so then when I put these bottom nuts on, the top nuts won't move. I'll also add washers to spread the load out. The lower part of the forks are a little bit too long to go on the print bed. So what I've done is made a little spacer that goes inside the axle joiner. To stop the forks from moving around, I've created these split collar clamps. Once these are done up, there'll be plenty of friction on the axle to stop the forks from moving. These forks need to be strong, so I'm using a piece of half inch steel box section that's gonna go down through the middle of the forks. And then inside of that, there'll be a piece of eight millimeter studding, that studding will screw into the bottom knuckle that holds the front wheel on. There's a captive M8 nut inside of this knuckle so the studding screws into it. And there'll be one at the other end of the forks at the cap end of the handlebars and that will hold the whole lot together. Once the support knuckles for the front wheel are in place, I can then slide the studding down inside of the square section and screw the studding into the bottom knuckles. A couple more split collar clamps and we're pretty much ready for the handlebars. When I started this project, I fully intended on 3D printing the wheels and tires, and I still plan on doing that. But for now, I found this kit online, which is like an e-bike creation kit, albeit very small wheels and tires and it comes with all the parts you need. So I have this front wheel here with the tire on it. I also have a back wheel with a hub motor built in and it comes with things like the motor controller, the screen, um, disc brakes with calipers and brake levers. And of course it comes with a little throttle or a key. But some of these parts I'm not gonna use because I wanna disguise these bits as best I can. So for example, here's one of my front uh, uh, handlebars here with a brake lever attached and I'm gonna dump this throttle and use a thumb throttle because I can hide it much better. So let's have a look at how this goes together. The knuckle is printed in two parts with some black inserts to make it look like the axle goes all the way through. Then there's a captive M10 nut held inside. The two parts are screwed together. Then there's an end cap to hold the end together. This is just pushed on. The axle has a 22 mm shaft which will take the brakes and the throttle lever. In the other end, it will take the M10 bolt which will hold it all together. This also adds strength to the handlebar. There's a small spacer to give room for the throttle lever. The brake lever goes together in a similar fashion, however I've managed to wrap the axle around the brake lever to disguise it better. I'm quite pleased with how this turned out. Then the knuckle just goes on the end and it all gets screwed together again with the M10 bolt. That's looking pretty good, let's get them fitted. Before we continue I should tell you that this video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay offer a wide range of services, so let's take a look at their website to see what they have to offer. They have an instant quote PCB manufacture service and PCB assembly service. There's OEM and EMS services. There's also a wide range of manufacturing options, such as CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, and injection molding. PCB way are 3D printing me a part in this incredible UTR8100 transparent material. The part they're printing for me is this headlight. This is printed in transparent polycarbonate on my FDM printer, so it's gonna be interesting to compare them later on. Right now, let's get back to the build. Installing the handlebars is pretty simple. 
They go down onto the axles and then there's a little nut that drops from the top of this end cap and that picks up on that central piece of M8 studding. I can then simply screw the end cap down and tighten everything up. That's most of the front assembly complete now. Now it's time to have a look at how these wheels go on. Now to get this wheel in place, I'm gonna to have to take this knuckle back off because the knuckle has to go on to the uh, front axle before they then get put onto the front forks. I've 3D printed some polycarbonate sleeves that go down inside the knuckle and that sits between the metal shaft and the PLA prints and provides a better fit. It takes a little bit of work getting the knuckles back on as a pair because they're both quite tight fit on the axles, but they get there eventually. To hold everything in place, I have these split collar clamps. They're aluminium and they drop down onto the metal shaft. And then there's a hole in the bottom of the print so I can get to the clamp bolt and do it up. Another clamp on this side and then that's the front assembly complete. I thought the front tire might be a bit too wide for these knuckles, but it seems to clear nicely. I can't believe how well it went together, but just look at it. <laughs> now I was always worried about these handlebars. You really don't want to lean on them like you would a bike. You can see them flexing there pretty badly. Now I did think about putting another one of these pieces across the top, but it just kind of ruined the look of it. I mean, they feel they're strong enough. They're just, I think if you really lent on them, they'd probably snap. I think that is shaping up to be possibly the coolest thing I've ever built. Cooler than a go-kart maybe. Hang on, I've got a chair here. Let's just have a little look. I reckon that's about where I would be sat height-wise. <laughs> yes. I just want to get on and build the rest of it now. That's going to be awesome. Or it's going to be terrible. I'm going to put this head tube assembly together from the main frame. I printed it in two parts to make the printing easier. I've got these parts here that will allow it to line up nicely and glue better. And I can also put some bolts in. I use the bolts for alignment whilst I'm gluing it. I'm using PLA Gloop here. It's my go-to glue for PLA, but you have to work fast because it goes off quickly. I'm just going to see if I can get the uh, pin down through. It was pretty tight. Mm. Oh, there it goes. Now that's going to take an enormous amount of load. This point is probably the weakest bit of the bike, um, but hopefully this is going to be held together with other parts underneath and other parts on top. But that's probably going to be the problematic area, let's say. It's going to be so cool when it's done. Can't wait. I realize this might look a little bit strange. I find myself in a different location. In the last three weeks, I moved house. So I, before I got to the end of that video, I had to pack everything up and move. And now I found myself in a field at EMF camp, which is why there's some weird background noise. In fact, let me show you what's around the corner because James Bruton's just around here doing this. James Bruton, say hello. Hello. There we go, there he is, doing that. Let's get back to the video. So I have a couple of bits to finish off here. There were some details that I didn't put on, which are in the end here, I put these little end caps on. So it looks like this uh, axle goes all the way through, but in fact it doesn't. That's just pushed in the end of that screw on piece there. And I've got a similar detail here, which is gonna go on the axle. And that makes it look like the axle goes all the way through. That's quite a nice little detail. Uh, I've got the console that's going to go on the top and that should take that holes in it there because it's going to take the uh, display from my e-bike kit. That is going to go on there. So that will be the console on the back of there. And the last part is the front light. I've made this probably a legal Lego part and that is going to go into the back of that. Well, that of course will fit into there and on the front of that I printed this in clear polycarbonate which is pretty nice and that works quite well. That will all go together and it all goes onto there like so. That's looking pretty good however I think it could be better. So the idea is to make this as transparent as I can because I want to make it into a functional light. 
So I had PCB Way print me one in a very special material, which I can't remember the name of, so I'll put a little label up here. Isn't that stunning? I mean, it is crystal clear. And it looks like it's been injection molded or cast, but it's actually 3D printed. That's gonna go on the front, like so. Beautiful fit. And that will give me a completely transparent front headlight. Amazing. I think we need to take a closer look at this. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Flawless. Well, I think that brings me to the end of this video. I'm super happy with how this has turned out and I'm really excited to build the next part, which is obviously the rear and the rear wheel and put the electronics in and what have you. And I'm hoping to do that here at EMF camp. I don't know how well I'll get on, but I'll give it my best shot because I really want to see the bike built with these suspension arms. Look at it. Oh, can't wait. Anyway, that's it for now. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave your comments in the section below. Bye.